I have with me Charles Rigo. He's the chief data center architect at Intel. Charles, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. Um, modularity seems to be today's number one topic in discussions of data center design, but there are very few known examples of uh, the modular approach actually being applied, except the few large end users that have been using modular or container-based designs for several years. There were also a few colocation data center projects announced this year. What, what are your thoughts on modularity? Do you think the concept is here to stay? And more importantly, do you think it's going to become more widespread in the future, or is it going to remain kind of a, a niche? <coughs> Well, I think I think uh, I think you have to define modularity, and I don't think modularity necessarily means containers. I think containers are a solution that can be applied to modularity. For example, our Jones Farm facility we built with uh, modular halls and rooms, uh, and we built it that way so that as we expand, uh, we can rapidly expand and add capacity if needed. Now, if you take containers and say it's, it's uh, a synon synonym for modularity, I, I think containers are the next generation of containment. So if you look at hot cold aisle containment and whether you use an isolation panel or a chimney cabinet, you were really isolating that set of rows and containers are the next step within that that allows uh, rapid deployment. Uh, I think you, there are solutions that are taking racks or rows of equipment and, and building a modular fashion that you can deploy. So uh, I think modularity is here to stay. It just makes sense from a cost perspective uh, uh, because you don't have the, you don't have the upfront uh, sink cost into building an entire data center. You can build out a modular portion of it uh, and then have it grow. Another reason for modularity is uh, the ability to mix tiers or high availability or, or resilience within a data center. So instead of building an entire data center to a tier three specification, you could have modulars that are tier two or tier one or tier four, and you can mix that modularity within the data center. So I think it's modularity is becoming a design criteria for a data center. Mm -hmm. So separating uh, modularity and containers, um, do you think containers, what are your thoughts on, on containers themselves beyond um, that you, uh, what you said uh, was just the next step? I, I, I think there's two, uh, I think there's two aspects to containers. Uh, first of all, no, a container's value is the ability to short circuit the construction cycle. So if you were to go build a data center that and it takes 18 to 24 months to go through the design process to build a data center, you can rapidly deploy a, a container which has business value that says I could start a new business, deploy a container, uh, prove that business out, I could add capacity very rapidly. Uh, uh, the, uh, so a d data center has to be designed for that. Whether a container replaces a data center, that's sort of questionable, I don't think that's going to happen, I think you have to have a special purpose built data center and a container fits in from a modular point of view. So one is it short circuits the, uh, short circuits the construction cycle. The, the fundamental uh, issue with containers is the scale factor. So am I buying a 40 foot container that has 2200 nodes in it? And for a traditional enterprise, they don't purchase on that scale. So maybe a 20-foot container or a 10-foot container is more fashionable to an enterprise versus uh, a large uh, uh, web 2.0 or internet portal data center that is deploying you know, tens, 20, 30, hundreds of these containers uh, within the facility. So I think the scale is what's really questionable and what is that right scale factor. Modularity is uh, also an often heard theme in data center cooling. M most of the major cooling vendors have in-row cooling solutions they are selling as modular. Um, these have also enjoyed limited acceptance due mostly to the fear of bringing liquids to the data center floor. Do you think these are reasonable concerns? And if you do, uh, what will it take for vendors to convince the industry otherwise? Well, I think, uh, I, I think there is a couple of things. One is uh, 
whether it's an in-row solution or it's a liquid cool solution, there is a specific market or requirement or need for that. Uh, but it usually becomes the excursion. So it's, I have, I want to put some high density racks in this area, I need supplemental cooling, how do I deal with that from a retrofit standpoint? And, or HPC where they're limited to fabric uh, and so they can't uh, decompact uh, those systems and so they have very high densities and so uh, that in-row cooling solution allows uh, a, a specific need to be fulfilled. Whether or not that becomes widespread, well, it's because of the cost factor. If you go and put that in every rack and you go spread this out through the entire data center, is that is it cost effective compared to using traditional air cooling? Now, the flip side of that is folks say, uh, if I go to liquid cooling, and that's not necessarily water, it could be refrigerant, it's, and could I use cold plate technology, could I uh, uh, use these different cooling technologies to achieve a greater energy efficiency? The answer is yes, but who, who would readily adopt that or change their current design criteria at this point? And I think that's what you're fighting against uh, or the industry is fighting against. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a specific need. Uh, uh, liquid cooling has a specific need. Widespread adoption, I think it's many years before uh, widespread adoption of that. Uh, water, I believe water shortage in the future is going to drive innovation around cooling and the need to get away from water specifically, which leaves refrigerant or air. What do you think uh, were the biggest breakthroughs in data center design in the past two years, and what is driving design innovation today? I, I think the probably the most significant, uh, probably the most significant factor or evolution has been the green grid. So the energy efficiency, PUE metric, uh, I mean, if you turn the clock back to, to uh, the formation of the green grid in 2006 and, and PUE in early 2007, there really wasn't an industry drive for energy efficiency. And with the bringing PUE to the surface, uh, and, and you could, one could debate whether or not PUE is is a good metric or a bad metric or whether it's one step in the evolution, but PUE really brought to the forefront the inefficiencies within a data center. And so therefore vendors now took notice, started making improvements in UPSs and the efficiencies have gone way up. Power supply vendors improved power supplies. Uh, uh, everybody from an energy efficiency standpoint started focusing in on how to conserve energy. So. I think that's probably the most significant evolution that has occurred. And then consequently, what has happened in the last two years is we've driven from an industry point of view, we've driven the power delivery chain to be pretty efficient. We've driven computers to be uh, very, very efficient from the standpoint of energy consumption. We drove that down and you get more compute power, less energy usage. Uh, and I think the next step is everybody's focusing on the cooling aspect because that's the biggest piece of the pie now in the, the overall uh, investment in TCL model. And so I think I think the PUE, I think the uh, uh, carbon uh, uh, regulatory requirements, uh, water shortages, I think all of those things will continue to uh, drive improvements within the data center uh, uh, around energy efficiency. So, and uh, to talk a little bit about Intel, uh, what is Intel currently doing with its data center design? Have there been major changes in the way the company designs its own data centers over the past couple of years, and what kinds of uh, changes are they? Well, I think I think Intel's no different than other companies. I think energy efficiency is is something we strive for, and so in our designs, we look at energy efficiency, how to improve energy efficiency, how to improve PUE ratings. Uh, of our data centers, uh, uh, how to how to uh, uh, maximize the investment. So, uh, how how do you take and create uh, 
elastic, elasticity within the data center because I think the whole data center model is changing. I think the data center has to be elastic today because it's all about capacity and it's about eliminating stranded capacity because stranded capacity means you've invested and in, into something you're not using and it's, it's leaving money on the table. And I think uh, across the industry, everybody's looking at energy efficiency and how do I eliminate stranded capacity? And Intel's no different. Charles, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.